Hi, everyone, and welcome. Um, I'm Dennis Lim, Director of Programming for Film at Lincoln Center. Uh, and thank you for joining us for this Q&A for Minari, the new film by Lee Isaac Chung. Uh, this film was the winner of the Grand Jury Prize at Sundance this year, also the winner of the Audience Award. Um, big, big critical favorite at the festival. It's certainly one of the most uh, anticipated films of the year. We are very pleased to be giving it a run in the Film at Lincoln Center virtual cinema. So thank you to A24, um, the film's distributor. Uh, they will be giving the film a wide release um, in February, 2021. Um, and I'm thrilled um, that we have with us today um, the wonderful team behind this wonderful film. So I'm gonna do a quick round of um, introductions um, before um, getting to the questions. Uh, first of all, we have the writer and director of the film, Lee Isaac Chung. Mm -hmm. And we have um, the entire cast, all the actors who make up the Yi family. Um, we have uh, Stephen Young, who plays Jacob. Uh, Yeti Han, who plays Monica. Uh, the two uh, discoveries, um, who are the Yi children, uh, Alan Kim and Noel Cho. And of course, uh, last but by no means least, we have uh, Grandma Soon Ja, um, uh, the great Ye Jung Yun. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for having us. Um, I'll start with a question for Isaac. Um, mm -hmm. Isaac, this is your fourth feature, um, and um, I've known you since your first. Uh, and I'm wondering, you know, what, um, why you decided to make a film that was, I think, by any measure, your most personal and your most autobiographical at this stage of your life and of your career. I mean, we often think of, you know, autobiographical films as something that young filmmakers do. Not that you're not young. I mean, you are only. I think you're only four features into your career. Um, but, you know, it's striking that in your other films, you've, you've looked, it seems like pretty far afield. You've made a film in Rwanda, you know, you've um, made really three very different features. So why an autobiographical film at this stage? Um, yeah, well, first of all, thank you, Dennis. And, and really thanks to the Lincoln Center for this is, is a great honor. Um, to, to answer your question, I guess um, it was always in the back of my mind that this is a story I wanted to tell. Uh, I just didn't know when that might be appropriate or when I might be ready to tell that story. Um, and I, I started to feel uh, within the past few years that maybe I don't, I won't have an opportunity to make this film if I don't do it now. Like I wasn't sure how, how my career would go and all those things. Um, so I thought that that was one push for actually trying to to pull this off. And then, um, I don't know, it, just various things I was reading or, or even things that were happening in my personal life. Uh, my wife and I had a daughter um, and she ended up, I, I mean, she, she grew up to be around the age that Alan is uh, when we filmed uh, Minari. And um, just, to, just to see the world through her eyes and to see things through her perspective, um, gave me a lot of impetus to try to remember what it was like to be a child and, and to remember that perspective on life and, and what I was seeing in my own parents. Um, so yeah, I, I started off uh, just writing down a lot of memories um, as an exercise and, and came to around like 80 memories and um, started to see the shape of a story that starts with an arrival at this farm and ends with a, a patch of minari that, that won't stop growing. Um, and, you know, there were things that happened in my life, such as the, the fire that my grandmother started on our farm. And, um, you know, there, there was one point where as soon as we moved into the mobile home, we, a tornado came. Um, so there were just little things that I knew could, could drive the story forward. And then I just had to figure out a way to make it actually work as a story. Mm -hmm. So you, you talk about drawing on your, your memories and I think this is always a question when, when people you know, deal with autobiographical material. I mean, I'm, I'm wondering how, how much of an obligation did you feel to sort of be true to, to those memories, but also how much kind of creative license did you want to take? Did you want to, you know, how much room did you want to leave for imagination and, and, and you know, maybe, maybe changing things um, in a way that made more sense for a film? Um, I, I guess 
bottom line, I felt like I needed to be faithful to the idea of creating a film and to creating something that's going to work as a story. So I, I gave myself that sort of desire to not have to preserve my memories and, and to to consider that this is a, the Yi family. It's not the Chung family. It's it's a completely uh, separate thing. Um, and, and I told my parents when I was writing this that I'm writing a story. It's a little bit based on our lives, but I don't want you to mistake and think that this is about us. Um, so I... I, I Part of that was I was afraid what they were going to say and, and that they might be really offended by by what I'm what I'm doing. Um, but but I found that you know even though I was actively trying to distance myself from my memories and from being faithful to the memories, like it's always there and it's always nagging at me and it's always presenting itself uh, even as I'm you know making decisions about production design or or about um, the way that we're going to approach a scene. There are things about the memory that will still come up and that you want to honor and that you want to preserve in some way, because I don't know, in a way, it's still a personal project that I'm hoping to leave behind for my daughter and, and for my family. Mm -hmm. You know, since we have all these actors um, here with us, I, I was hoping you could, maybe the next question, you could just talk a little bit about putting this cast together, this family together. You know, it seems like such um, an important key to the film is that, these actors for sure yeah. work together are you know cohesive are believable as a family unit um my understanding is that steven was the first piece of the puzzle for you yeah that that's exactly right and steven and i we have a family connection already um my my first cousin who grew up in arkansas is married to steven <laughs> and and so we we've known each other and we didn't know each other that well um and I, I kind of didn't want to bother Stephen with my projects and stuff or, or talk about work uh, in the past, but uh, we have the same agent and she kind of suggested, hey, let's show this script to Stephen. And uh, I mean, I, I was so fortunate that Stephen read it and was felt very connected to it. Um, and so he was the first to come on board. Um, I don't know, Stephen, if you want to add anything to that or. Yeah, I mean, um, I, Isaac wrote, something so honest and uh, so true to his point of view. Um, you know, I, like he said, we, it's not, I don't think it was that you didn't, I mean, I would have been so lucky to work together. I think it just never came up. Um, that's kind of also so Korean in that way. You just like, you don't want to let you each other. So you're just like not saying anything, but like ultimately we never really <laughs> talked about film or working together. Um, but that was even like the coolest way for me to receive a script like that, for it to just kind of appear out of thin air and there to be like a connection like that, that felt so, um, in some ways, kismet, divine, whatever you want to call it. But um, to then read it and say, wow, like, you know, even the connection of family that I'm married into, um, there's like a through line of just like, sensitivity and honesty and, and bravery of like how you approach a story like that. And so um, I've only heard secondhand through my wife about what their family story was and, and through their parents. Um, but to read it on the page like that really like filled in a lot of gaps and um, yeah, it's beautiful. And can you talk about putting the rest of the, of the cast together? Um, Yeri and, and Yeojung are very, very well-known um, figures in, uh, in Korean cinema. So talk about adding adding them to the mix. Yeah, um, I, I was teaching in Korea at the time and uh, a good friend, Ina Lee, who is a producer, he, she, she's produced for Vin Bender. She's a German Korean producer. Um, she read the script and she wanted to help in um, connecting me to actresses who she felt would be perfect for this. She mentioned, first of all, she mentioned Yun Yeo Jung. And I didn't think that, I, I was like a fan already. So I wasn't sure that could actually happen. Um, <laughs> and luckily she said yes. And, and we met we met together quite often in Seoul to talk about the story. Um, and then uh, Han Yeri uh, was the same. It was through our, our friend Ina who connected us and um, just getting to know her work and, and just um, getting to know her as a person. I mean, it, it was so clear to me that 
I was starting to see this family come together. If, if it's Steven and uh, YJ and Yeti together, you really see a family that you want to fall in love with. And then um, after that, it was, it was uh, I, I came back home to LA and, and we were hitting the ground running, uh, looking for the two kids. And our casting director, Julia Kim, uh, was instrumental in that in finding these two who who hadn't acted before in a film, but um, I mean, they were just perfect for this film as well. I wonder if the um, any of the other actors want to say a little bit about um, what you what you responded to um, in the script. Should I do it in order, like uh, elderly first <laughs> <laughs> in Korean way? <laughs> I always get a chance to talk first because I'm older <laughs> than they are. When they were, I, I like to tease Isaac and Stephen very much. When he was talking about family connection between Stephen and Isaac, that's why he hands to the script, that's bad Isaac in Korean way. Family connection is very, it's like a bribing <laughs> something or, you know. That's the, the root of <laughs> corruption, right? On it. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I'm teasing. And I always like to know that because uh, my experience, uh, it's very, very serious condition in the set or somewhere. So I try to tease everybody, it, but maybe that's my resting time. But Isaac is a very sincere person. So he, he doesn't get my sense of humor. So that was the sad part. <laughs> yeah. is, is she joking right now? I can't. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my experience, I read the script from, of course, that Isaac's friend, Inali. Inali comes all the time. She, her name is appear on every interview. She gave me the script uh, written by English. So middle of the reading, I called her. Is that real story? And she said, yes. So, so, but because it was so realistic and it has a detail. Of, uh, I had some kind of second-hand knowledge. I was staying in the state um, almost 10 years. I have two kids over there. So I, you know, I have lots of friends who came from you know, Korea as an immigrant. And so, oh, it was very realistic to me. So I phoned her back again and, okay, if it's real. And to me, it was very touching. So, okay, I will do it. That was the, my story. <laughs> I would do it. <laughs> I think I think Yeti, Yeti, you want to go? Not, not lady first in Korea. Men, <laughs> lady. Male first. Oh yeah, you should be. Yeti. I don't know. 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 내가 얼마나 이해를 할수 있을까 그리고 이 내용을 내가 잘 받아들일 수 있을까라는 생각을 제일 먼저 했었는데 감독님을 만나고 나서 되게 어, 모든 게 해결이 되고 모든 게 편해지고 감독님의 어떤 얘기들을 들으면서 아, 이 사람이랑 작업하는 게 정말 재밌을 것 같다라는 생각이 들었어요. At first, when I received the script, um, I wasn't quite sure because all the lines were in English and I didn't receive a translated version. Um, I wasn't sure about how much I would understand the story and I, if I would be able to um, fully comprehend it. Um, but after I met Isaac, it, I felt that everything was resolved. I just felt so comfortable and I realized that it would be such a great experience um, getting to work with Isaac. Then, 비어 있는 부분들을 감독님이랑 충분히 채워갈 수 있을 거라는 생각이 들어서 오히려 어 오히려 좀더 풍부하게 모니카를 보여줄 수 있을 것 같고 그렇게 감독님을 믿고 하면 너무 사랑스러운 사람이 나올 거라는 생각이 들어서 해야지 라고 생각했어요. And when I first read the script, I felt that there were some gaps in Monica's character, but I 
realized that by working with Isaac, we would be able to fill in those gaps together um, and allow me to portray a really rich character. Um, so I knew that I could really trust Isaac and create a character um, that's quite lovable. And that's when I decided that I need to do this project. Noel and Alan, do you want to say anything about the script, your parts, your experience making the film? You can go first, Alan. <laughs> you don't want to go first? <laughs> you sure? <laughs> I am 100% sure. Okay, probably experience was very amazing. And it's just cool to just see myself in a big screen in a movie yeah. theater. But well, Alan, did you read the script? Your mother read the script? <laughs> yes. Oh. <laughs> so did you like that story? Yeah. Tell me the truth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I still have the script in my room, actually two scripts in my room of when we were putting on Minari and I keep on reading it over and over. And every time it's just so overwhelming and so good that I read it to all my, all my cousins, which probably in the middle part, they all zone out. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm not that serious. <laughs> <laughs> wow, no that's, that's that's okay. awesome. Good. That's awesome. How much time did you all spend together <clears throat> before shooting um, to sort of, you know, just, just getting on the Zoom call, like before we started recording, it seemed like there was this rapport among all of you. And I'm wondering how much time or, um, you spent before the cameras were actually rolling or did that, was it something that just emerged um, once you started shooting? I think we just had a week before production that we were together, mm. uh, if, I, if I remember correctly. But we, um, we did a lot of reading of the script um, and that, at this house in Tulsa. And, and that ended up really helping us to bond and to, to work out the, the script and, and what we were gonna do. Um, and then throughout the production, I mean, we were, we were kind of isolated. So we spent a lot of time together, mm -hmm. like a real family. Did you, Isaac, did you make any changes to the script after casting? It seems that for instance, mm. the grand, grandma character, um, it sounds, seems like Yon, Yon, Yon Jung seems to share a sense of humor with her her character, um, and you know, I'm just wondering how much of that was something that you asked actors to bring in to the role, or whether you made adjustments uh, based on casting. Um, I mean, for sure, there were lots of adjustments with each each person who was brought in. Um, that I, I wanted to make sure that the script fits with with each individual, um, and and everyone was great in providing notes and thoughts and, and things that they feel, felt could really flesh out um, each person. And that, that helped a whole lot. That made the script um, go to another level. Mm -hmm. Any of the actors want to, want to talk a little bit about, about this process of just sort of coming together as a, as a collaborative sort of family unit? Um. Yeah, I, I think I think it all really stems from Isaac. I think Isaac really crafted and, and casted an incredible cast. I, I felt like we all lived and shared an experience. Um, I remember the first time I met uh, Yun Zhen Zhengyin, YJ, um, it was at the restaurant and um, uh, she accompanied me outside on a little break and we were just talking and um, she was, I was so scared because I was just like, you know, she's to me and to Jacob, like the eyes of Korea in some way, like, um, you know, I want her validation more than anything. 
And um, she was gracious enough in that time outside to just be like, you know, I saw your work. Good. And I was like, <laughs> and I was like, okay, I'll take that. I was like, she, she, nice. she, yeah, yeah. She, she, she said, no, she wasn't mean. She was just like, she was saying like, you didn't have to do that. And I respect that. And that, when she said that, I was like, oh, thank you. <laughs> and then um, I, I, I took that moment and I realized that reverence that I have for her and the reverence of needing that validation from her is also such a thing that Jacob holds on to. And so, um, and in that same way with Yeti, you know, we, we spoke a lot about, you know, I came to her and was like, I think Jacob and Monica are like this and she's not as um, aggressive as I am perhaps. And um, she was like gracious enough to not like shoot me down all the way, but she was like, I actually think they're like this. And just the way that we missed each other in that way was also perfect for the roles. And so, and then Dave, Alan and Noel, like the way that they, I mean, we, you just saw it, like their brother and sister, like it's just this really nice synergy of casting that I think Isaac crafted where um, we just lived it out and it was really wonderful that way. Let me tell my story when I first met <laughs> Yeah, everybody has a different view. And um, yes, yeah, we were outside and then Stephen said uh, he was very scared of the portraiting uh, this Jacob scene and especially with the, his Korean. Mm -hmm. Then that's a very good sign with my experience. Uh, um, people say, okay, I'm good at this. I, 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 I can do this better. Then I never seen anybody who does better. If people say I'm very scared of these things, then that means he's taking that job seriously. So I took, a, I gave him A plus. So I told him, don't worry, I will help you. Don't worry, I will help you. So speaking Korean, speaking Korean is expert. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, I'll be with you in the set. <laughs> that was yes. our conversation. Thank say you. nicely, Stephen. <laughs> oh, of course, of course. You don't know how happy I was that night. <laughs> you have no idea. <laughs> I just want to add, like, I mean, what Isaac and Stephen are saying of being fans of um, Yu Yu Jung, who's maybe American audiences are being introduced to her work through this film, but she has a, uh, I think, a really remarkable body of work um, in Korean cinema and films by Kim Ki Young and. Kim Sang Soo, and 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 I, this film introduces American audiences to those those uh, those great works. I think that would be uh, an added an added benefit. So, mm. um, do you, is any of the uh, do you, any of the other actors want to talk about any particular experiences on on set? Uh, Yeti or Alan or Noel? Do you have any any experience any any particular moments on on during a shooting that stand out to you? 일단은 너무 신기했던 게다 감독님을 너무 좋아하고 이 영화를 좋아해서 보러 온 사람들이 너무 많았어요. 그런 그런 일들이 사실 흔치는 않고 진짜 그리고 약간의 뭔가 되게 기적 같은 그런 순간들을 많이 만났거든요. 영화를 촬영하면서 그리고 어떻게 이 사람들이 이렇게 계속적으로 따뜻하고 친절할 수 있을까 이런 생각들을 이 영화를 하면서 내내 했던 것 같아요. 우리 영화가 엄청 사랑받고 있구나라는 생각. First of all, I didn't know that at the time because uh, because it, Isa was in the system middle of somewhere. <웃음> oh, I see. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <웃음> <웃음> I'm just the <웃음> year. Oh, okay. <웃음> sorry, I'm very. Sharon's, Sharon's work. <웃음> I'm sorry, Sharon. <웃음> First of all, what was really surprising is that, you know, people loved Isaac and this project so much that so many people came to help on set, which is actually um, not that common um, for film sets. And while we were shooting, I felt that there were some moments that felt like a miracle. Um, and just throughout the entire process, I was constantly surprised at how generous and kind the people were who came to help. And I really felt um, so much love for this project. 그리고 감독님, 스티븐 선생님, 뭐 알렌도 그렇고 노엘도 그렇고 다 같이 
어, 너무 힘들긴 했지만 이 순간들을 굉장히 치열하게 즐기고 있다는 느낌을 너무 많이 받아서 개인적으로는 어, 진짜 오랫동안 남을 것 같고 그 다음 영화는 어떻게 하지? 라는 <웃음> 걱정이 들 정도로 되게 좋았어요. Mm. You know, with um, Isaac and everyone in the cast, we did struggle shooting this film, but I also felt that <laughs> everyone was thoroughly enjoying the process. And so personally, I feel like these memories will stay with me for a very long time. And now um, I'm, I'm at a point where I'm really kind of worried about my next film. Noel and Alan, do you have anything to add? Do you want to go first or should I? <laughs> you go first this, this time. <laughs> Me or you? Yeah. Me? Yes? Go yes. for it, Alan. Um, I guess how... Joelle and I became fast friends just by just like, I don't know, just like a snap. I think the first day. Okay. Yeah, the first day we just became friends. <laughs> then. Oh yeah, we also went swimming and and ate together and then played games. Alan, did you like working with us, the adults? Yes. <laughs> Are you just saying that because I asked you? No. You had a good time with us? Yeah. All right. It was sad when I had to leave. Mm. No. <laughs> um, okay, so the story of how me and Alan met, everybody has a different story and a different point of view, so <laughs> I remember when I first met him, I had a book, um, a drawing book for him and some crayons so we could draw together. And then at first he was pretty shy for me or me, yeah, I think he was pretty shy at me. And then we started drawing Mr. Um, Potato Head and then he started cracking up and that's when the real mischievous Alan came out, I would say. Like his version <laughs> now. <laughs> Isaac, let me, um, I had a, a couple of questions for you about, um, about sort of the themes of the film and, and how you were thinking about it. I mean, you know, you, you described this as a very a personal story, one in which you're drawing on memories a lot, um, but it's also a film about immigration, about the immigrant experience. Um, and it's a subject that is, you know, I think unavoidably political these days. Um, um, as well as personal, obviously. And I'm just wondering how you, to what degree you thought about this film as one that dealt with that experience in a very particular climate, a very particular context in which you know, immigration is, 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 is discussed in, and framed in a very particular way in America these days. Um, I, I do feel like I thought, started thinking about this story much more uh after 2016 in a way um and and it wasn't it wasn't a knee-jerk you know protest against trump or anything like that but it was um i i just felt like somehow immigrants were being used in a in a way to uh put forward some, uh, put forward political rhetoric um and i and then also people living in the countryside uh people who grow up, grew up with a rural experience were also being used in that way or categorized in a certain way. And for me, like I grew up with both. I grew up in the South. I grew up in a very religious home. I grew up as, a, as an immigrant or a child of immigrants. 
And um, I just felt like there is a sort of view of people that transcends all these categories that are being thrown around and talked about. Um, and that, that, that was more true to my own experience and the way that I would relate to um, the people who are farming alongside my dad or the people who are working with my dad or, or the friends that I have uh, down in Arkansas, um, as well as like the, the actual immigrant experience and what that's like. Um, so yeah, those, those thoughts did come to mind. So I, I, I did want to take a certain view with this film and, and approach with this film that uh, maybe reframes the discussion and, and hopefully talks about it in a more human um, sort of way. And, and naturally uh, the, the very personal things come out in, in that sort of thing. Um, Cause those are things that, that matter to me. Mm -hmm. Stephen, did you have a take on this? Cause I, uh, you also grew up in an immigrant family. Mm. Um, yeah, I think uh, while I didn't grow up um, in the same way that Isaac did in, <laughs> Uh, we visited his childhood home and like you really did live so isolated in that way and that's a completely different experience I think um, than the one um, I inhabited but I lived in kind of the middle of the middle the flyover states um, uh, immigrant life um, and I think you know the charge that I've always been looking for you know when when, when I say this was an honest script that I read um, it wasn't so heavily mired with like the context of, of the American majority gaze kind of embedded into its story. Um, and when I say brave, I mean, <clears throat> Isaac wrote something is true to his point of view. And um, I haven't read much things like that. I think a lot of, um, I think the most difficult thing about the immigrant experience and maybe um, the minority experience and how to tell that true is that we also have to recognize within ourselves that we also carry within ourselves the encoding of the American majority gaze. And like the final barrier is we need to eliminate that gaze even from ourselves um, mm -hmm. to see ourselves a little bit clearer. Um, and I think, um, you know, there's this story that um, I, I, I talk about that Isaac was so awesome to do. Uh, he wrote this incredible part at the end of the script um, that I think all of us loved, which was this wonderful voiceover montage sequence that had this great um, voiceover that said, uh, you know, Minari grows in the first, uh, dies in the first year, grows in the second, um, comes in the pockets of immigrants. And it kind of, I remember reading it uh, before we started, it was like a month before we started and I read it and I was in the car in the middle of the road and I was just weeping. Like I was just, I pulled over and I was just like reading it. I just started weeping. And it was everything that you want to say to your parents, everything that you want to talk about their sacrifice and all the things that they did for you. Um, but what was great was right before we started, Isaac cut that whole sequence. And um, I agreed, you know, like we, we talked about, it. I was like, yeah, that is the best move because we don't need to romanticize that story. We don't need to see, um, that is still a captured version of our parents and that generation and that story from our viewpoint instead of a real empathy from the truth of what that experience was. And um, that was really important that we frame it that way. And even further, it was really important that we frame um, the story from an inside view of this family where you're not, using oppression per se, not that it doesn't exist or hardship, but that you're not using those things to justify their existence. You're not using suffering to justify why they get to live, but rather they get to live because they live and that they are. And so um, to tell it from that place, to tell it from our perspective as we lived it, as we truly remember it, that was something that was like incredibly liberating. Um, and you and and for me, you know, I even wore, uh, I even asked Isaac. I was like, Isaac, could I, could you rewrite the script so that I could play the son older? Sorry, Alan. Um, where like you split half and half time, because I was so afraid of playing an idea of our fathers or a person that was from that era, um, because there's so much weight to it. There's so much on it. You know, there's 
there's there's so many stories that want to be fulfilled through a character like that that felt very heavy and burdensome in some way and um what the work that i had to do was breaking free of my own understanding of my father and that generation and really clearing the path by which i myself could identify and link with them which was i'm a father too and um i am my father and um, we lived at different times, but the struggles are similar and the same. It's a human thing. And um, once we narrowed it down to that, once we narrowed it down to Jacob, not representing something larger, but really the human condition of this one person, it actually was a lot, it, I think it unlocked and dismantled all the barriers of entry around that character so that everyone could access it even if you're not Korean American that you know if you're just a if you're just a human being you can access that and I think that was um, that was the most important part of that for us well, that's, that's really well put um, Isaac you you mentioned your you know your apprehension about your parents um, response to seeing this experience um, dramatized so I'm wondering I assume they've seen the film now and what, what was that conversation about? Yeah, um, I, I, was, I was more worried showing it to them than I was showing it at Sundance or showing it uh, <laughs> publicly, to be honest. Um, and I, I didn't know how they would take it. Um, but yeah, it, it, we, we watched it over Thanksgiving. Um, I, I always joke, we did it. I, I made sure to time it after our meal so that you know the meal would at least go well. Uh, and then we, we started to watch it. And um, I just noticed that my, my sister was there as well as my sister, my dad, and my mom. I mean, they're just tearing up throughout the whole thing. Um, and Yong Ok Lee did an amazing job, our production designer, really um, making that home look like uh, what, where we grew up. And um, just watching it together with them, I, I just felt this deep sense of uh, communion with them that we had really, we were recognizing within each other. Yes, we all struggled together and look, we've made it on the other side. And also that we can finally, we're, we're all seeing each other as human beings. Um, like what Steven's mentioning with that voiceover, um, this isn't a film that puts my parents on a pedestal. It, it's not, um, you know, even de that could be dehumanizing in some way, but it's it's really just trying to look at everybody as individuals, as human beings and their human struggles. And uh, it, it was incredibly moving after it was done, uh, just the way that we embraced each other and and uh, uh, yeah, uh, it, it was it was quite quite a precious thing. And that, that happened a year ago, um, and I, I just feel like uh, we have a better relationship in some way in which we're, we're kind of looking at each other and knowing we, we see each other in some way um so it, yeah it's just been precious to me um i guess we might have time for maybe one more you know closing question and i'm just going to be going to ask something that all of you can weigh in on and it's something that's that's come up a couple of the actors have um have mentioned it which is just like the level of detail in the film um you know just how um how how precise it is um, in its in its moods and its textures and Isaac, you talked about drawing on your memories. Were the, were there other like sources for this sort of? Because I feel like besides being you know a film about a particular immigrant experience, a film about childhood, it's also a really interesting regional um, film. You know, it's a film about a part of America. Mm -hmm that we don't see very often on screen as a part of, you know, we don't see many films about farmers. We don't see many films set in the Ozarks. We don't, you know, so I'm just wondering if you can speak a bit about that. And I'm, I'm wondering if the actors want to add anything about like how that, um, particularly the Korean actors also like, you know, come, working on, on an American film, but in this like very not often seen side of, of America and, 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 and how um, specifically you, you, you brought this to life. Um, yeah, I appreciate that. I, I, I mean, you, you've seen uh, my first film and, and some some others I've done. I, I think in the past I kind of worked on a, on films that might have been a little more situational or, or uh, following moods that that progr uh, progression of moods. Um, but with this one, I 
um, I, I think I, I was reading a lot of books and, and just wanting to go about it in a different way in which there would be details and then uh, like that Chekhov sort of way of using details and then bringing them back and letting them weave throughout the story. Um, those, those were things that were uh, lots of fun. So a lot of those, they originate from either memories. Uh, some of them are references, um, to be honest, and, and, or else they're just little plot devices and details uh, that, that I, I like to go to. Um, uh, but there was a lot within, I think, specific de details that team members were bringing as well, like Yongok Lee in her production design, incredibly detailed with uh, the things that she was picking um, and she's, she's Korean, uh, she's also an immigrant and she remembers that era and remembers what, what homes look like. And, and she had a very strong vision for this. Um, and we had, um, I don't know, diff different things within the South, within growing up in Arkansas that I wanted to make sure that we have uh, different pictures that I referenced and, and stuff that uh, we wanted to go to. Um, and then and I, I guess a lot of the details exist within the actual human beings. And that, that was just the fun in writing and, and working with these guys and really pulling out little things in their stories that those specific things really make them human, I feel. Yeah, I don't know if anyone else wants to. 사실 되게 미국적인 영화라는 생각보다는 저한테는 개인적으로 굉장히 보편적인 어떤 가족의 이야기다라는 생각이 들었고 어, 이 가족이 사랑하고 어, 싸우고 어떤 사건이 일어나고 이런 것들이 어, 어느 가정이나 다 겪는 어떤 성장이라고 생각했어요. 이들이 어, 좋은 방향으로 가기 위한 어떤 이야기들이 다 들어 있다라고 생각을 해서 사실 굉장히 뭐 아메리칸 무비라든지 아니면은 어 이게 어떤 특정한 사람들을 위한 이야기라고는 저는 생각하지 않았어요. 그래서 오히려 더 편안하게 다가갈 수 있었던 것 같아요. So for me, this film never really felt like an American film. I thought it was a story, a very universal story about family, um, about how they love each other, fight and go through all these things. Um, and this process of growth that any family really goes through. And I thought it was a story that ultimately led them towards a better direction. Um, and I didn't really, so I, in that sense, I didn't really feel like this was an American film or a story about um, and for a particular group of people. And I think that helped me take a more comfortable approach to this project. Um, my turn? Okay, I have a little bit of experience living in the state. Uh, actually, mostly in Florida. It's the south part of the America. But they are not farming. They were yes, they have an orange grove. So actually, it was farming too. So <clears throat> first, when I got in Tulsa, Oklahoma, I never been there. I thought maybe the Oklahoma is from that. Uh, you know, the, what's the movie about that? Uh, Wizard of Oz. So I thought <laughs> maybe this is the place. <laughs> when I got there, all I remember was it's just so hot and so humid. And uh, we were filming in the big, big, how many acres was it? That farm or the whatever, that thing. Oh, that, we were yeah. okay. putting the trailer on that spot. So there's a lot of bugs and some kind of insect <laughs> all over me, all over my foot. <laughs> if I'm, I, Ticks, if you ask me the question, I will always tell the, just the truth. Not the, like, the, you know, that the Stephen and Yeti is very, very uh, good, uh, what do you call it? Like a scholar, a, a scholar actor or actress. I'm not that. <laughs> tell you the yes, truth. she is. She's so smart. <laughs> so I was, so I had to stuck with them like five weeks. I found it out. Oh my <laughs> goodness, this is, I never had experience in Florida. It's a different. So 
then they put me on first location, five days a row, the FDO of 80, first 80. Still, I don't like him, Stephen, <laughs> because I'm an elderly person. And they should, you should have gone. You are the main, the main character. You should go on set first. And then, mm. you know, when you are in first set, first comer, then you will face lots of problems. The air condition went out and everything. We were suffering with Isaac and me. Alan was suffering over there. And they were at home. The <laughs> Stephen and Yeri was resting. <laughs> so I was really upset. <laughs> and I complained to Ina. Oh, if I were in Korea, I could have just ran out, run away from you know the set. And then I told Yeri, this is not Hollywood. Yeri, listen to, listen to me carefully. This is not Hollywood. It's, you better just uh, pull yourself together. <laughs> that was my lesson, first les lesson, right? <laughs> that was my experience in that set. <laughs> I think, I think, I think Yun brings up something really interesting about like, and Yeti, about what she said about the differing of perspectives of how we all approach this film. And that is kind of the push and pull and the tug of like, what all of our characters went through too, which is why this thing felt so meta at, at that point. Like Yun Sen Seng Yim, like you're used to Korean production and then for you to come this way and, and be part of an independent American production was probably a shock and, and, and Yeti as well. And there's this, there's this tension there. And I think, um, you know, like I was saying about the gaze that we're trying to eliminate ourselves from, we're also trying to not, we're also trying to eliminate ourselves from just the mainland home Korean gaze as well, because the experience that this 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 family is going through is so unique and specific. It is the Korean American or the immigrant experience is its own thing, and I think that was, you know, it kind of played itself out in that way, which was really wonderful. I'm I'm sorry, Sun Zen Yim, that you had a tough time though. Not we not love you. you. <laughs> like to become a scholar, but me, just I'm just like. <laughs> Alan, Alan and me. <laughs> I'm forever indebted to <laughs> all of us. <laughs> well, I think we are unfortunately out of time, but um, that was that was a good note to end on. Um, I, I, want, I want to thank all of you for your your stories, your thoughts, um, and really thank you for this film. Um, you know, it's it's. We're excited to share it with people, um, and it, it's great that it's um, finally getting out in the world. Um, so, congratulations, all of you, um, and, and and thank you so much to all of you. Thanks, Dennis. Yeah, thank you, Dennis. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.